Let's set some ground rules here. <laughs> You're wearing sunglasses today. You okay? okay? <laughs> All right. Don't don't make me get defensive and bring up the fact that at least my Eagles were in the Super Bowl. Don't make me complain <laughs> about the officiating. Yeah. Don't let me complain about how long the halftime was so the Chiefs could recover <laughs> yeah. from that first half beating. I want to keep positive today, and <laughs> I'm officially in mourning. I'm going to be honest with you, Maggie. Last night was tough. It looks like today is tough. It is tough. <laughs> I took a red your... eye in after a night of crying like Nick Sirianni at the, <laughs> the anthem. I, I just had the hardest night. I've been trying. I, I thought I would be able to keep it cool and be professional and analyze the game. I have to be honest, that hurt. No, let it all out, man. Like, this yeah. is different. You were at the oh. game. We have a resident Eagles fan on this show. Just, like, bring the emotions. It's a safe spot. Okay, so I actually sat in the press box, not the stands, which made it a little easier. There was a moment at the end of the first half when the Eagles tackled Mahomes and he was limping off where I was picturing the parade. I let my oh, mind go no. there. The Eagles looked like a force. They own the time of possession. And if you have a 10-point lead and you're up – about 23 to 10 in time of possession, you're going to win the game all the time. Then Rihanna, and I'm not blaming Rihanna. She was great, came in. and Was obviously, she, though? Was she great? We'll get into that later. Well, okay. I, I see what you're saying there. <laughs> yeah. I think the second half, that it just took all the wind out of our sails, and I'm saying our. Yeah. And it was a completely different second half. I still think the Eagles could have won the game if they had gotten one last drive. Absolutely. Uh, we could get into the call in a little bit. We Obviously, should. it was a horrible, horrible decision by that official. And anyone who says, yes, it was technically the right call, and Brad Barry, the Eagles corner, admitted that he did tug on the jersey. But I'll tell you, in that guy's brain, the official who called that, you know what his next thought was after he threw the flag? I wish I didn't throw that. Oh, crap. What did I just yep, do? I think so, too. And, you know, we can, we're can. we going to talk about Mahomes. And, you know, we're starting with the Eagles today, obviously, because, you know, Perloff, we're, you know, we're feel, we feel for you today. Thank you. And, you know, while you would probably be throwing salt in the wound if the Bills were in this position, oh. I'm going to try to be gentle with you today, even though we're all <laughs> reveling and drinking your tears a little wait, bit. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so last night, by the way, Mahomes. what <laughs> was that tweet last night? Oh, wow. Perloff got to see the Phillies in the World Series and the Eagles in the Super Bowl. What a thrill. I said, that was savage, man. <laughs> Savage. I said, I said, what a throw. You got to play for the championship. Oh, <laughs> I know what you meant. We all know what you meant. Okay, but we will talk about Mahomes and all of his greatness. We don't want anyone out there to think we're being, you know, yeah. like, the, you know, we got to focus on the final call. Oh, I, and by the way, we we all look. Who doesn't love the Chiefs? Who does not love Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes? It's universally approved. Well, and we'll get into are they a dynasty in the you know the the match like the the quarterback coach duo and all that stuff. We're not going to cheat the Chiefs out of their day to the victor goes the spoils. But we got to talk about that that call because I yeah. think you're right. I think the official in his moment said, yes, this might have been my training. Yes, I probably could have made that call, but I should not have made that call. And that's something that you're not going to be able to learn in like referee school. That's just understanding the tone that you have set for this Super Bowl and you didn't follow it with under two minutes left to go and the team on the five yard line. Preach. And the third and eight, like how or Preach. how dare you? How dare you to the officials? And I'm feeling for you today because listen, I don't know if the Eagles deserve to win that game. It was a fantastic Super Bowl back and forth. How the Chiefs, you know, figured out your Eagles defense in the second half. Like all of it was just so good. And then that official, like, would we be crying today if the official had not thrown the flag? No. Exactly. Because the, the Chiefs did not have the play. Mahomes was under some pressure. He overthrew it. It didn't rob them of a touchdown. It was the wrong call in that sense. Remember Gene Steratore, the CBS officiating expert, was on. Yeah. The, our YouTube chat's favorite guest of all <laughs> now, time, Gene now Steratore. Legendary, now legendary in the chat. <laughs> For every, every interview that goes on two minutes too long is now known as Gene. <laughs> okay. Gene Steratore, what was the one thing he said officials have to do? The one thing. Be consistent. He said, set a tone in the game and stick to that. And that's exactly what this dude did not do yeah. on Sunday. And it robbed us impartial fans of what could have been a great, great ending. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you speaking impartially, and no one's going to believe that today. Is Are you telling me you didn't want to see Jalen Hurts try and come down and tie the game or go ahead in of the last minute? Of course I did. Absolutely. And, like, I had even bet on the Chiefs, and I still wanted the final drive. Because that's what the Super Bowl, if you're lucky enough, is all about two best teams 
having an awesome game and a great matchup, and then it comes down to the final drive. Absolutely. Instead, we got final milk the clock on kneel downs and then chip shot field goal, which is like the most anticlimactic, boring way to end a Super Bowl. Yeah, there was a little drama with the running back go down at the two-yard line. That was impressive. Okay, can I say something about that? Yeah. So Greg Olson, you weren't watching it on TV, right? No, no, no. Okay, so you're just in the stadium. Greg Olson called it, like right there. Go down, go down. I think that if McKinnon had, or if, uh, excuse me, if the Eagles defenders had not given up on the play, it looked so obvious that they were going to let the Chiefs score there. I think if they had faked it and ran a little bit harder, I think McKinnon might have just like, oh my gosh, and like went into the end zone. The acting clued McKinnon into something. The the defensive guys for the Eagles like didn't even try. Well, they were slightly faking, but you're right. Not hard enough. Like, they didn't sell it enough, and I think it gave his brain an extra second to think, oh, my gosh, no, 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 get down here. Because I think if, like, the linebacker's running really fast along the goal line, maybe it scares him to thinking, like, oh, I just got to get in the end zone, right? Like, something in the moment. Oh, 100%. I think officials act that way, too. They saw Patrick Mahomes point for the flag, and that flag came out late on the holding call at the end, and I think Mahomes influenced it. People are get influenced in the moment very much so. Now, I don't know. Maybe they did plan in the huddle. I, did anyone address that post game? They must have, but it, it was smart. I, I wish it was he, very smart. Yeah. Won in the game. Yeah, I, I think that the Eagles, with Jalen Hurts running the ball, the Eagles were not going to be stopped at the end. I, I think Mahomes and Hurts, if they're, they're going to sell out for the run and four downs to get the ball ahead, it's very hard to stop well, them Well, that's that spot. the key, too. I mean, it's Sirianni. It's four downs every time, yeah. you know, and it's just – Everyone else is playing three downs mostly, and you're playing four. And it's just different. However, you know, to be honest, like the Chiefs had the better, you know, average per run than the Eagles. Yeah, they outran them big time. And it was more like the Chiefs were just way more efficient when they actually had the ball. Like the Eagles are doing those 17 play drives, ends with a field goal. I mean, that well, was that one, one of the, the end, that killed them. In it, was the 20, half. it was 24 21, and they had a drive that ended up. That was a killer to not get in. And I believe there was a, a short, a third and one or a second one with Kenneth Gainwell, and he didn't get the first down. That killed them. Yep. It's a little thing. It was such a close game, but it shouldn't have been. I'll tell you right now, the Eagles should have won that game. And if this was week 10, the Eagles would have won that game pretty decisively. I think Jalen Hurts fumbled in the first half, gave the Chiefs life. They really were about to put. You know, they were about to really run up the score a little bit. And then they could have gotten after Mahomes. But the Chiefs stayed close enough where they could run. Kind of, They ran the ball with Pacheco. And yep. Mahomes was so smart with the short passes. He was great. And what's interesting about this to me from the Chiefs side of things, and we want your phone calls, of course, at 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. We're back in the studio now. We got all the time in the world for you today. And we want to hear from you. But the one thing about the Chiefs that I thought was really impressive was this wasn't like an all-time Mahomes game. I mean, because of the ankle injury and him gutting it out and the good run on the 26-yard run that set them up and put them in great field position, like that part of Mahomes was an incredible, electrifying moment. But the magic here was Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy just emptying the bag. Yeah. It, Peter King had in his column this morning. It's a it's a, a play called Corn Dog. <laughs> they ran it to the right. They ran it to the left for two different touchdowns. Kadarius Tony walks it in. Sky Moore walks it in, and it was just the play calling was amazing. They did the ring around the rosy thing again. Like oh, they just thank God that didn't work because I did not want that highlight. <laughs> I know. The then Mahomes threw it out of the back of the end zone. But like they they were just doing everything they could so that you didn't get the Mahomes throwing it left handed. The crazy arm angles. It wasn't like oh my gosh Mahomes the magician it was wow this Chiefs offense is just unloading the clip right now on the Eagles at the perfect time of the game well also too their offensive line did an incredible job the Mahomes was not touched in the second half was he nope no sacks uh it was that was really really surprising he did get rid of the ball quickly but the Eagles pass rush came out in the second half so flat I couldn't believe it they didn't win a single one-on-one battle slow why they look slow in the second they, half? I don't know. I think they got tired after watching Rihanna go up and down, and they probably came out at <laughs> halftime. I, I, I don't know what, what happened to the pass rush. I guess, you know, I have heard a lot of people say the Eagles had a weak schedule, didn't play any good quarterbacks, and when you put a good quarterback against defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon, they Gannon always lets him get a lot of completions. That's his problem. He, he lets you – he's a bend, don't break defensive coordinator. Yeah. You can't do that because the Chiefs are so good in the red zone. 
I, I oh, oh man, now you're getting me worked up. Also, th- there was a point in the first quarter where I said, if they could just stop Kelsey, this is a win. Where did those receivers come from? Juju, excuse me. <laughs> where did you come from, Juju? I love you, Juju, but don't show up out of nowhere <laughs> in the second half. Well, I mean, yeah, with a couple of nice catches. And, you he know. had a couple. He had a million. He was unstoppable. <laughs> it's just so funny to watch you deliver this in the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching us now, YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio. <laughs> you're morning, but you look like De Niro from Casino. So I got these, <laughs> I got these vintage sunglasses. I, they're De Niro in Casino, and yeah. I've been dying to wear them for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I figure I just want to cover my face. They're, they're not flattering by any means. No, they are if you're going for that whole, you know, Vegas. Abe, of... what's his name? Abe Froman or something? <laughs> no, uh, no, Abe Froman's no, the that, sausage, king, sausage of king of Chicago. <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> for Paris, <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows that for a while. Abe, uh, uh, can anyone do the Abe, Abe Froman? <laughs> the so you're king. Abe Froman, the sausage king of Chicago. What is uh, the guy from Casino's name or De Niro's character? Come on. I, well, how's our research department not know what this? Is his name in casino it's um we're gonna get it you you're spitting image oh i like, know i want to start calling you bobby and you know okay <laughs> i can do uh i can also do de niro in goodfellas hold on let me switch up glasses oh, no. uh the scene where he's sending karen to get shot at the end he's like oh he's, yeah he's <laughs> it's so he's good. Like, no 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 down the keep street going. down the street keep going keep going <laughs> if you're not on tv now i have the glasses on the bridge of my nose like de niro and he's looking at a clipboard. Uh, that's the one imp- physical impression I could actually do. <laughs> Man, you've been delighting us with Cam Smith and all these other crappy impersonations. You yeah. could have been doing De Niro this whole time. Uh, that's, that's all I got is, oh, gosh, I can't even remember the line. Karen, no, 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 no. It's down there. He, yeah. He's definitely going to shoot her, right? He's going to have her killed. Definitely. He's telling her to walk down the dark alley to go get, like, some jackets or clothes or something. And they're definitely going to kidnap her and kill her. What's his name in Casino? Sam Eighth. Ace Rothstein. Oh, Ace, Ace Rothstein. Sam yeah. Rothstein. And rappers rapping about that. Ah, how did I not come up with that one? Anyway, I, I called him Abe Froman. <laughs> Believe me, you did fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do have a little Froman in you. <laughs> you up by one letter. Ace, Abe, same thing. <laughs> yeah.